Okay. Now I'm vol on volume. Well, hello. So uh, we've had a presentation from uh, the Affiliations Committee. Uh, the Affiliations Committee is just one of the many committees that we have within the Wikimedia uh, movement. So my name is Dumisani Ndubani. I work for the Wikimedia Foundation. Uh, my title is Senior Community Governance Strategist. It's a long way of saying I support committees that work within the foundation. So, the best way to think about the governance within the movement is to look at what the movement consists of. Uh, in the big circle, we've got your Wikimedia interfaces, we've got the Wikimedia content, and all the projects that are in there. Uh, outside of that, we've got contributors, we've got external free knowledge, we've got um, knowledge, uh, uh, no, uh, knowledge graphs, uh, propria proprietary content, and all of this is part of our ecosystem. The question is, who ensures proper oversight and governance of all of this? Well, we need committees for this, right? But who will serve in those committees? How are they elected? And who are they accountable to? Here's another overview of the committees that we have within the Wikimedia system. And I, 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 I divide these into committees that are formed by and report to the Wikimedia Foundation Board of Trustees. And on the black is the arbitration committees. Now, these committees do not report to the Board of Trustees. So these are independent committees working on language projects. And every other committee that you see there is one way or the other linked or reports to the Board of Trustees. Um, I again divide this into four, four buckets. That word bucket is overused, but let's use it. Uh, so the first one is on content. The second one is on projects. Uh, then you have community, and then you have foundation. The work that the foundation does also requires some sort of oversight and um, collaboration with the movement. Then, and those, that's the existing structure, there's two committees that are coming in that haven't been formed yet, which is the Universal Code of Conduct Coordinating Committee, which is uh, a long way. So we use the U4C committee. That is the one that's going to implement the Universal Code of Conduct. And then we've got the Movement Charter Committee, that's drafting committee that's going to tell us how the Wikimedia Global Council is going to look. And that will uh, most probably have committees or subcommittees of its own. So there's a lot of committees happening in the, in the movement that all needs to be coordinated and supported. Um, I, in particular, with my colleague Manav, support the Affiliations Committee directly, and we also indirectly support the um, other committees that are listed in there. Um, so all of these committees will, will, will go into details uh, into how they actually work and function and what do they actually do. I don't know if my colleague is already online because the next slide was his. Is uh, online. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> Hello, Joe. Hello, everybody. Hi. Can you all hear me? I hope you can. Yes, we can. Right. So tell, Perfect. tell us it's about the you. committees that you work with, Joe. Cool. I feel like I'm announcing the votes at Eurovision. It's awesome. Um, hi, my name is Joe Sutherland. I'm the lead trust and safety specialist at the Wikimedia Foundation based here in not so sunny San Francisco in California. Um, as Dumasani was introducing, I work with uh, some of the content committees uh, as the finder. Uh, most notably, the arbitration committee is where I work uh, directly with I liaise with them in a series of monthly uh, meetings. But I can go through what other committees do uh, from the slides. So um, some of them are a lot broader in scope than others. So the Ombuds Commission, for example, so starting with that one, uh, they investigate complaints about violations of the privacy policy, uh, especially in the use of the check user and the suppression tools, uh, and advise the foundation on how to handle concerns. So they'll receive reports 
they'll evaluate those reports along their um along their lines they'll discuss it as a committee as a commission um and then we'll present their recommendations to the trust and safety and legal teams at the foundation uh and we will uh, enact a course of action based on that um the case review committee is uh is in charge of reviewing appeals of foundation actions or trust and safety office actions in particular um this is an independent committee that uh, can can hear appeals for actions that we have taken or actions that we did not take um, if uh, somebody disagrees with the outcome that we came to. Um, that helps us to that helps us to not overstep our authority and our, not overstep the community's authority um, in, in what the actions that we take. So it allows that sort of layer of uh, of appeal there. The uh, arbitration committees, so there's 11 of those. Um, they're all varying stages of activity and varying stages of uh, sort of maturity in terms of the policy and the communities that they support. Um, but they're groups that serve as the last step of the dispute resolution process. The most sort of notable of those and the most sort of uh, established and um, uh, sort of bureaucratic, if you like, of those is the English Wikipedia. That's the one I support. I support the English Wikipedia Arbitration Committee. But we also have staff members involved in liaison with, work with the Russian, uh, the Polish, uh, and until it uh, dissolved a few years ago, the French Wikipedia Arbitration Committee as well, uh, as well as the German Wikipedia Arbitration Committee. So there's a bunch of those. They all support Wikimedia projects, uh, dispute resolution processes as the sort of absolute last uh, stage that make binding decisions on conduct uh, on user conduct. So they'll make a binding decision in a topic area, for example, um, and and that their sort of decision will be sort of binding on everybody on the project. Um, and then finally, we have language committee here. I'm not as familiar with language committee. Um, this is the committee, though, that will uh, hear requests for new language projects. Um, they develop clear policy and documentation around those projects uh, and the proposal. Um, and they'll support and, and coordinate that with, with folks on things like the incubator wiki and, and um, is the, just that through that whole process of getting a language from um, requests through to, to on, our, on our production sites. Um, so, yeah, very important committee, but uh, not one that we see uh, spoken about very often, but they do exist and they are there. Um, so, great. Uh, that's all I have from this slide. I'll pass it back to Dumasani for uh, the next one, which I believe is about uh, the affiliations committee. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for uh, staying up. I think it's uh, very late where you are. Um, so for, for my end, uh, in terms of community and foundation, I will talk about the affiliations committee. AFCOM is here. <laughs> Uh, this is entrusted with uh, advising the Wikimedia Foundation Board of Trustees and reviewing applications for approval for new um, new movement affiliates, national, subnational, thematic organizations, user group, and who knows, even hubs. We don't know yet. We don't know yet. <laughs> um, within the foundation work, um, we've got the elections committee. Uh, which works with the Wikimedia Foundation Board of Trustees to uh, design and plan community-led uh, elections, particularly the ones that end up uh, electing people into the Wikimedia Board of Trustees. And then uh, newest of our communities is the Regional Fund Committee. And um, I think you will have seen on the program that uh, Jessica will be running a couple of those uh, uh, clinics on how this funding committee works and how you can join it. But this really is to enable communities in each region to have a central role in setting priorities and allocating funds uh, for specific initiatives. So these are communities based in regions that help with uh, funding for those regions. So that's those are the existing committees, but this two Two new committees, as I've alluded to, that are coming through uh, that would really need your help in participating in how they get formed and who will serve in those committees. The first one is the U4C, that's the Universal Code of Conduct Coordinating Committee. And we currently have the U4BC, which is the Universal Code of Conduct Coordinating Building Committee. <laughs> 
that's going to tell us how this committee is going to work. And this will be a co-equal body with other high-level decision-making bodies like your UPCOMs, your AFCOM. So you will escalate to this body for any universal code of conduct-based infringements. Um, the Global Council is the one that's planned or intended to serve as the global structure that will respond to the needs of our movement as a whole and represent communities in an equitable way. So how will this be formed? The MCDC is busy telling us, or at least uh, is busy drafting how that's going to look, to look like. So that's a lot of committees. There's a lot of involvement that we would like you to, to have, but uh, what do you need to serve in any of these committees? I think you'd need three things, or at least ask yourself three questions. The first one is what skills would I bring to this committee? And that would be including things such as a strong reading and writing skills, because we are still a text-based uh, community. So all the complaints that AFCOM gets, all the applications that, that they get, all the work that the ab arbitration committees get is text-based. So you really need to love reading text uh, to be part of these committees. You need to have a, a, a good ability to read and write in at least multiple languages other than English, so you can help the communities and the committees to be able to deal with different applications or different concerns that communities uh, bring up to them. And Finally, I think the most, one of the important things is at least some good grasp of uh, the wiki markup and comfortable with media wiki because that's where most of the work is happening. Then the second question you need to ask yourself, does my background add to the diversity of these com committees? So in terms of diversity, we talk about regional diversity, we talk about language diversity, um, ask yourself, do you, does your participation there add to that? And finally, do I have the proximity to the community that I seek to represent? Uh, specifically, if you are coming from a region that is less represented, at least have some communications or, or connections within that community so that you are actually properly representing the views from that. Um, how do you... How do I apply? Uh, we are running. We have started to consolidate the different... Uh, application types for all these committees and um, between October and December will there will be an opening time for application process for the different committees in January there will be a vetting and in February we'll be working on appointments so use that time to apply for these committees um, because they need you and finally any questions hopefully not the difficult ones because Joe is gone and, uh, oh, he's here. If you've got difficult questions, please ask them for Joe. I am here. <laughs> Nanur has a question. It's a rapid uh, one. Uh, uh, because you said that this uh, survey is, it will start in October and uh, the building committee for uh, U4C, uh, they are well, finished in November, I, I think, and uh, how how it could be that uh, they not uh, be decided how uh, who can be on U uh, four C, and then uh, the uh, application with started in October. Yes. So this the the timelines only apply for the existing committees, does not apply for the U uh, four C. The U four C will take a different timeline, and that will be announced as soon as the U four C, B, C has completed the work in defining how that committee is going to look like. Next question. Hopefully hey, this Bob. is for Joe. Yes, Joe. Ciao. Joe, how could you forget about this? <laughs> well, stewards probably are not a committee, but I'm wondering, there's also a code of conduct for technical spaces committee. Does that get some support by your team or a different team? Joe, do you want to take that one? That I can. I apologize for forgetting you. You weren't on the you weren't on the slides. Uh, of course, we do work with the stewards as well. We do treat the stewards as a committee because they tend, like, by all intents and purposes, are a committee of uh, of volunteers who, you know, work on anti spam and work on uh, global governance issues. Um, the technical code of conduct is not run by us in trust and safety directly. Um, I'm trying to remember who actually deals with them on a day to day basis. Um, 
I don't have an I don't know if I have an immediately an answer for you. Um, but I know it's not something it's not a committee that we directly work with uh, on a day to day. Thanks. Thank you, Joe. And thanks, you, but, uh, Martin, we'll for cool. asking that because I needed Joe to answer something. <laughs> Any more questions? It looks like I still have more time. Not the difficult ones. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, you didn't mention gender uh, in the diversity, but I, um, you didn't have time. Um, what is the current state of gender diversity in the different committees and what are the efforts made to improve it? Yes, so I'm a straight talker and the current state of diversity in these committees is alarming. It's bad. Um, we definitely need more applications uh, to, to correct that, um, that information. In particular, I can speak for what AFCOM is doing. We've now created a guidelines and a list of skills and criteria that we will be looking at for the next round of application and that does include gender as part of the things that we are looking to add on to it but you're right the makeup of committees uh, throughout the movement doesn't reflect the aspirations we have on gender equity and diversity so it's up to you to help us to correct that and that's it. I've got one more minute that I can pass on to the next speaker. <laughs>